Today's video is all about chemical reactions. So I definitely think that students get, you know, reactions, equations, and formulas, sorry, chemical reactions, chemical formulas, chemical equations. I tend to find that students sometimes get them mixed up or they sound similar enough that it's kind of, you know, it's hard to remember which one's which. So today's video is all about reactions. Now, a chemical reaction is when a substance or, or, or a material is changing chemically into something different. Now, that's not always easy to tell, uh, mainly because some things can throw us off. So there are five things you can look out for. And if you can find more than one of these um, bits of evidence or observations, then you can probably say with a lot more confidence that you are actually observing something changing chemically. And by chemically, I mean that the material it starts off with and the material that it finishes up becoming are very different materials, meaning that they're composed or, or made out of different atoms per se, or rearrange those atoms in a different way. Uh, I'm not saying that things that are changing physically, uh, that's the opposite case, such as, you know, turning water into steam or uh, from water into ice. Those are not chemical changes because they're the same material, water or water molecules. What I'm saying is something that is completely different. And there are five ways of telling if there are a change, if there's a change going on. So I've got them on a piece of paper here for you to sort of see. So the first one is gas. Next one is heat being released or absorbed, light being emitted, a, a precipitate forming or a color change. So let's go through the list one by one. Now I've got a lot of examples, so you can sort of kind of sit back and relax and just enjoy all the eye candy. So the first one on the list is gas. Now, if you can see a gas being released either as a smoke trail, uh, in this occasion here, you're probably looking at this little crucible, the ceramic uh, container. And when the student lifts the lid off, uh, it sort of uh, reignites the combustion of the material inside, which is magnesium, by the way. Uh, you can see a bit of magnesium oxide, uh, a bit of a smoke trail, if you will, coming out the top. That's a gas. That's a new material that wasn't there before. And I've got another example here, which is uh, lighting a biscuit on fire. And uh, as it sort of goes through its burning process, you see a lot of that smoke, which is um, bits of leftover carbon uh, and maybe a bit of uh, other sort of debris flying through the air. Uh, that's definitely a new material. That's definitely not biscuit flying through the air. Uh, I've also got more examples. So in this example, you can see that uh, um, this container with a uh, sort of a metal in the bottom and it's creating bubbles and it's actually sitting in some acid right there and it's reacting with the metal to release some gas, uh, which we are uh, observing later on in the video clip. One more example of gas being produced uh, here. I've just got like a wine glass that I filled with bicarbonate of soda and poured in a little bit of vinegar. Now those two things react to create carbon dioxide gas. And that's why you see the whole thing fizz up at the end of the clip. Now this last example you're viewing right now is uh, not an example of a gas being produced from a chemical change. This is actually just dry ice that I've taken and sort of sat in the sun. Uh, and what dry ice is made out of is carbon dioxide. And it's been super frozen. And so it's that solid sort of pellet shape. But in the uh, warm air and the warm sun, it changes from solid state straight into gas. And, and we call that sublimation. And you can sort of see that as a sort of a, a visible trail. In fact, what you're probably seeing is the really, really cold uh, air near the dry ice. And so it's so cold, it's causing the moisture from the air to condense and form a bit of a water vapor appearance. So that little smoke trail is not actually carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is colorless. It's much more likely that you're viewing the uh, condensed form of water vapor. Some other things we can look at on the list is heat being released or absorbed. So whenever you light the uh, match on fire, you create a bit of warmth. In fact, all fires will um, uh, emit heat to the surroundings. And the reason why this is a chemical change um, uh, indicator is because a chemical reaction will pretty much always involve a change in energy, change in chemical energy, and that's the energy stored in the bonds between atoms. So uh, it's part of the driving forces, one of the driving forces of why things will change from one thing into the other. 
it might try and find a way to get to a lower energy state, a lower chemical uh, energy. And if it goes from high to low energy, then that excess has to go somewhere. And that's often released as light and as heat. But there are some occasions, and I think that perhaps more few in, in, is, is when a reaction will take in heat from the surroundings. And those are the reactions that require you to supply heat to, for it to continue going. So there'll be things like, uh, you know, cooking your food on the frying pan or in the oven and things like that, where you supply the heat and then that food product uh, takes that heat in to make some chemical changes. However, the other thing that can happen is that um, uh, for instance, those instant ice packs uh, you might have in a first aid kit where you kind of rub it together or crush it, uh, the insides of the packet and it starts to get cold. And what's happening there is you're mixing the two chemicals that are in the packet by uh, agitating it and it starts taking the warmth out of your, out of your skin as you hold the packet from the surroundings, it's taking heat in, which makes it feel cold. So if you are doing a chemical reaction or doing a process in the lab and you kind of put your hands nearby, let's say you've got a, a jar where two liquids have come together uh, and that jar starts to get warm or, to, or it gets colder, then you are probably looking at a chemical change. The next thing on the list is light. Now I showed you the matchstick earlier, but this time I want to show you one more thing and that is glow sticks. They're really cool. You've probably seen them all the time from, you know, festivities and things like that. And what's happening is that as you uh, uh, break the insides, it's actually, I think it's separated by two chemicals separated from each other by a glass tube. And if, as you bend them, that glass inside breaks down and allows the two chemicals to mix. And in this occasion, those two chemicals release light. So, uh, and it does so for a while. So that is another really good indicator for a chemical change. Next thing on the list is a precipitate. Now you've probably never heard the word in the context of chemistry. Now you may have heard of precipitation from like the weatherman. We may see some precipitation in the north, southeast and the air current. What they're referring to is just rain. For us in chemistry, precipitates is a very specific thing. And that's when you've got two liquids, when you combine the two, sometimes you get a reaction where it appears, that mixture appears to be a bit cloudy. And if you observe more closely, and in fact, if you let it sit there long enough, you'll find that cloudiness tends to settle to the bottom. What you've just created is out of those two starting materials, those two starting liquids, which could be very clear in, in appearance beforehand, when you allow them to mix, they form a new material that doesn't dissolve in either of those original liquids. And so this is a solid. And we lots and lots of tiny, tiny fragments which make it appear to be quite cloudy. This is called a precipitate. And I'm showing you right now some of the most beautiful examples that I have uh, uh, recorded over the years, and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, and last on the list is color change. Now, sometimes when you have a chemical reaction going on, it may change color, but it's not a reliable clue because other things can change color and they're not really chemically reacting. So, uh, for example, a, a flame the classic science experiment where you put uh, uh, different substances into a flame and excite them in the heat and they emit beautiful firework colors like red and purple and orange and you know all the colors there that's not actually reacting it's just uh, it's actually just changing states if you will like kind of like solid liquid and get solid liquid gas but in this sense we're just you know changing the state of those electrons from low state to high energy state and then back down again which then creates the light from the flame so it's not always a reliable indicator that you're observing a chemical change but i will show you some that are so the first example i'm showing you is a test tube and in the very end of the test tube i have some green powder now that green powder is uh, copper carbonate and when I apply a bit of heat, I'm able to decompose it into, I believe, copper oxide, which is a black appearance, and that's what it ends up becoming at the end. The next video clip I'm showing you is where I've got uh, two test tubes. One of them is filled with a pale blue solution, which I believe is a copper compound of some kind, and then a, another uh, test tube with another clear liquid. I forget what it's made from, I apologize. And when the two combine, we can get a dramatically different color from the original two. Uh, and this is because a new substance is being cr uh, created. 
And lastly, I'm showing you an example of uh, or one of my favorites. So the students at my school uh, in year 11, they do an experiment with copper and they take it through all kinds of beautiful stages. And in this occasion, they are at the stage where they've gone from a, a blackened solution and by adding just a bit of acid and stirring it for a while, it goes from this very opaque black solution to this beautiful, beautiful blue copper, uh, copper uh, uh, solution at the end. So So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Well, it may be a bit longer than the, than the usual videos I make, but hopefully it's been one of the most you know, interesting to watch. So the next video that I'm gonna follow up with is uh, about chemical equations. So you've already heard me talk about reactions today. The next video is about equations, what they are and, how to, and, and what they're used for. All right, check you out in the next video.